بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ ویلکم ٹو انادر ڈیٹیلڈ لیکچر آف شاک ویو تھراپی اینڈ ان دس لیکچر وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس دا پیرامیٹرز آف شاک ویو مائی نیم از سید علی حسین اینڈ کرنٹلی آئی ایم ڈوئنگ پی ایچ ڈی ان فزیکل تھراپی فرام تہران یونیورسٹی آف میڈیکل سائنسز تہران ایران This is one of the Chinese shockwave therapy unit that is manufactured by the company named as Jinha and it is a pneumatic shockwave therapy unit. There are different shockwave therapy units. There can be magnetic or pneumatic or electric and a lot more. These two images, they are showing us that how the shock wave can produce its effects so normally we see an effect that is called as neovascularization that means that the formation of new blood vessel in the picture left you can see that the blood vessels are collapsed while in the right picture that has a legend after it shows the new formation of the blood vessels and more patent blood vessels as compared to the left image while the blue image on the right it shows the application of shock wave for pain or painful conditions just like the shoulder pain or impingement syndrome now there are different names like extra corporeal shock waves or just simply shock wave therapy so extra corporeal shock wave or shock waves are a single acoustic high pressure pulses generated by electrohydraulic electromagnetic piezoelectric or the ballistic or radial methods now the important point is that it is a single shock wave is a single acoustic high energy pressure pulse so it has a high pressure pulse it has high pressure a pulse that contains really very high pressure and it has another phenomena that we are going to study or discuss in the later slides here you can see when the projectile strikes a metal applicator at the end of the guiding tube or simply called as the applicator or handle a stress wave is generated in the applicator so it is similar to a person hammering something the stress wave is then transmitted as either the radial shock wave or focused shock wave into the tissues now radial shock wave differs from the focused shock wave and it has a few differences and mostly they are on the penetration depth and there are certain other physical properties that are different from each other here you can see in the image left you can see a focused extra corporeal shock wave or an image that tells us the shock waves that are focused so it is similar to focusing to a single subject so all the energy is focused to a single point whereas on the right you can see the radial extra corporeal extra corporeal shock waves that are the radial so they are divergent and they are not very focused so one benefit is that we can address the large surface area or bigger area as compared to the focused extra corporeal shock wave usually the focused extra corporeal shock wave equipments are really very costly as compared to the radial shock wave equipments and most of the cheap modalities that we find on the internet they are basically the radial shock wave machines now both are characterized by an initial high positive or high pressure peak that can range from 10 to 100 megapascals and some studies say that it can reach up to as high as 1000 megapascals or megajoules so a low tensile amplitude is you know followed is following the positive pressure amplitude so when whenever there is a positive pressure it is followed by when the pressure stops it is followed by a period of low tensile pressure or amplitude it is a sh short life cycle of approximately 10 to 20 millisecond and has a broad frequency spectrum 
like uh, there are two important parameters on almost every shock wave that you see one is called the frequency and the other is called as the power or intensity so here we are talking about broad frequency spectrum that we can choose from 1 2 3 4 and up to 12 in most of the units so 12 is the frequency spectrum and the pressure spectrum can range from 10 to 100 so we need to look for all the manufacturers uh, for these technical specification whenever we want to buy some unit we need to understand and we need to find out what are the technical parameters of that machine so if you are unable to find those parameters or you you don't get a manual of course it's a really very difficult task to do and most of the chinese manufacturer uh, they they don't uh, share this information very easily so it is always better to ask your manufacturer about these things now there are some effects that are direct and there are some effects that are indirect effects so shock waves they produce the direct effects because of the result of the transfer energy and indirect effects that are the results of the creation of the cavitation now cavitation is really very simple to understand you know when we open any soft drink and there are bubbles popping up automatically there is no source of air at the bottom of the glass but still the bubbles they keep on coming up so this creation of bubble is called as the cavitation so normally within the body there are three types or there are two types of cavitations one is called as the stable cavitation and one is called as the unstable cavitation and normally they are associated with ultrasound for more detail on the cavitation you can go to my youtube channel and uh, you can find my lecture on ultrasonography or ultrasound therapy or technical specification and practical applications of therapeutic ultrasound and then you'll find and then you'll come to know more about cavitation and what are the pros and cons of the cavitation now it produces some cavitation in the target tissue and thus it has been hypothesized that both the direct and indirect effects produces a biological response in the treated tissues now these are some differences between the radial shock wave therapy machines and the focused shock wave therapy machines so here you can see the pressure difference the focused has a lot more pressure and the radial has a bit less pressure but for most of the applications uh, in the in the physiotherapy or in ed treatment erectile dysfunction treatment uh, radial can also work because the, the surface area or the area is really very superficial to work with now pulse duration both of these have roughly the same pulse duration that is uh, about two microseconds uh, to two milliseconds and uh, the pressure field as we discussed in the previous figure is one is focused and uh, the other one is radial and divergent so with radial you can uh, treat larger surface area while with focused you can treat small uh, surface area at any particular time penetration depth of course the penetration depth of the focused one is more because the energy is more focused to a single point so hence we can say it has more depth of penetration while the radial has a small penetration little penetration between three to five centimeters and really very superficial so effects uh, they can be produced at the level of tissues and on, on the focused they can be produced at the level of cells so uh, of course for self treatment and for for clinics that are really very new the radial shock wave therapy uh, does work and if you know the right parameters you can still treat your patients now history is really very interesting that it was it was uh, in the year 1982 that uh, they developed this shock wave extracorporeal shock wave therapy for the uro uro urologic conditions or for the kidney stones and uh, the success of this technology for the treatment of urinary stones quickly made it as the first line and non-invasive and effective method of treatment for the renal stones subsequently uh, this was studied in orthopedics and various other professions as well so uh, there were a lot of studies going on with the animals and humans and you know uh, i've read it that they were working on bone cement and they they just tried to see the effects of bone uh, shock wave on the bone cement and so many things uh, even on the healing of the fractures and uh, finally nowadays it is more focused to 
the upper and lower extremity tendinopathies, fasciopathies, and some soft tissue conditions, especially uh, uh, calcaneal spur or plantar fasciitis or impingement syndrome. And there are a lot of conditions that we are going to just name them. So again, uh, it's important to remember that there is a high peak pressure followed by a low tensile pressure or amplitude and there is a very short duration and there is a frequency range and there is a pressure amplitude. Here you can see this is the graphical presentation of uh, an increase in the amplitude. So you can, you can uh, consider it as a synonymous to uh, when somebody is striking something or hammering something. So it is just like a pneumatic hammer that is pressing or you know hitting your body and when it hits it creates a it creates a positive pressure inside your body and then it is followed by a negative pressure that is sometimes referred to as the rarefaction and uh, in the air and then you know there is cavitation so this down line the down green line and the down red line is the negative pressure phase while the top line uh, from the baseline is the positive pressure uh, phase and it has high amplitude and so this is basically what's happening in terms of pressure inside the body that whenever there is uh, this application of shockwave therapy unit you you see that this sudden increase in the pressure followed by a sudden decrease in the pressure so hence it causes the direct effects due to uh, sudden increase and indirect due to sudden decrease so these two effects can go uh, with hand in hand and if you uh, now focus on the frequency this is just one pulse that is being shown so if you increase on uh, intensity let's say to 10 so on this uh, screen you you might see 10 such waves but they they will be really very short-lived so the duration of these shock waves will be really very low just focus on the thing that the duration okay now parameters these characteristics they produce a positive and negative phase of shock wave and the positive phase produces direct whereas the negative phase produces the indirect now in comparison to the ultrasound or therapeutic ultrasound the shock wave peak pressure is approximately 1000 times greater than the peak pressure of an ultrasound wave so there are two different types of ultrasound therapeutic ultrasound and diagnostic ultrasound broadly they are classified into these two types so if we because that is also an acoustic therapy so it produces uh, some uh, sound and it works on the principle of sound so if if you compare a therapeutic ultrasound with the shock wave the shock wave has about 1000 times greater uh, you know pressure as compared to the ultrasound so it it is really very high pressure modality now indications of for shock wave therapy uh, their upper and lower extremity tendinopathies uh, great trochanteric pain syndrome medial tibial stress syndrome patellar tendinopathy plantar fasciopathy adhesive capsulitis non union of uh, long bone fractures avascular necrosis of the femoral head and osteoarthritis of the knee but there is no standardized protocol for the treatment of musculoskeletal conditions the studies are still working uh, people are working on the studies and there are a lot of studies that are being done so nothing is final Contraindications can be pregnancy when it is used on directly on the abdomen. You know, it is not advisable to use on abdomen because uh, it, it is sometimes used to reduce the body fat or the belly fat. So when somebody is pregnant, even if a lady don't know about the pregnancy, so it is not advisable to treat the ladies uh, when they are not sure whether they are pregnant or not on the tummy region. Over the major blood vessels and nerves like... Uh, on the neck region uh, on the carotid arteries or you know the major blood blood vessels of the body and nerves of course because if you strike them you can cause some serious damage pacemakers and other implanted devices open wounds joint replacements epiphyses uh, epiphyses are part of the bone so blood clotting disorder including thrombosis hemophilia and blah 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 plus infection cancerous tissues and a compromised mental status of the patient and or the inability to cooperate these are the differences that uh, the therapeutic ultrasound utilizes high frequency sound waves so it has either 1.1 or 1 megahertz or 3.3 or 3 megahertz so these two frequency ranges can be there for the therapeutic ultrasound but uh, 
if we are talking about the shock wave frequency parameters i told you that we can range from 1 to 12 mostly at some time you can go beyond that also it depends on what sort of unit you're using so ultrasound may produce either thermal or non-thermal effects in the tissues while shock wave does not result in heating effects so ultrasound may produce either thermal or non-thermal effects in tissues uh, but the shock wave does not produce the thermal effects it only produces the non-thermal effects both of these modalities they require some coupling media that is some gel that is used by a lot of professionals and it is really very cheap this coupling media helps to transmit the energy from the transducer or from the applicator to the tissues talking about the effect uh, as we discussed earlier that there is the formation of new blood vessels that is also called as the neovascularization and this is really very important because nutrient blood flow is necessary to start and maintain the repair processes of damaged tissue structures and we know that in ed the problem is with the blood supply so we just need to improve the blood supply the application of acoustic waves they create capillary micro ruptures in tendons and bone and due to these micro ruptures the expression of growth factors such as the enos v egf pcns and bmp is increased significantly as a result of these processes the arterioles are remodeled stimulated to grow and new ones are formed so the new blood vessels they improve blood supply and oxygenation of the treated area and support faster healing of both the tendon and the bone and various other tissues here you can see the schematic how the shock wave helps to regenerate the blood vessels reversal of the chronic inflammation so whenever you find uh, some inflammation or that is chronic it, it can also be used in some uh, subacute and even acute cases as well depending upon the type of the condition so chronic inflammation occurs when the inflammatory response is not completely halted it can damage healthy tissues and result in chronic pain so muscles are one of the key components of the inflammatory processes their activity may be increased by using pervasive acoustic waves just like the shock wave and mast cells activations followed by the production of chemokines and cytokines so these are the pro-inflammatory compounds or mediators uh, they are first enhance the inflammatory processes and in the next step they help to restore the normal healing and regenerative processes here you can see uh, in this image application of shock wave results in inflammation new vascularization and then uh, reversal or the uh, resolution of the inflammation it can also enhance the collagen production so the collagen production is increased and it leads to more uh, strong myoskeletal and myoskeletal plus the ligamentous structures uh, it also accelerates the uh, pro collagen synthesis that formation of new collagen and helps to uh, strengthen the tissues here you can see in conditions like impingement syndrome and some other conditions it can be used to restore the collagen dissolution of calcified fibroblasts so whenever there is some calcification in the body or calcium buildup uh, it can break the calcium deposits just like a toothpaste uh, like consistency uh, you know and it, it just grinds the calcific deposits uh, there is a condition called as the myositis ossificans and heel spur so most commonly even in calcific tendonitis it can be used with uh, some promising results in these two x-rays you can see on the left there is more calcium deposit on the humerus or head of the humerus while on the right image the head of the humerus is showing almost no calcific tendonitis dispersion of the pain mediator substance p substance p is a neurotransmitter that mediates the pain information through c fibers which are small fibers and this neuropeptide is generally associated with intense persistent and chronic pain it relays pain messages to the central nervous system as well now lowering this 
concentration of the substance P, it produces the stimulation of efferent or the ascending or the sensory nociceptor fibers and thus reduces the pain. So decreasing substance P, histamines and other nociceptive metabolites also help inhibit the development of inflammatory edema as well. So acoustic waves generated by the shock wave therapy lowers the substance P concentration and triggers the pain relief. In this image, it, it shows you that it causes decrease in the uh, substance P production and it, it helps it to disperse the substance P. Trigger points are the knot-like structures in the taut band of a muscle. So they can also be crushed like uh, crushing the eyes. So you know, when you, when you apply shock wave, it produces some metabolic crisis in the trigger points and then uh, it reverses uh, the trigger point formation. Here you can see the schematic of how the application of shock wave onto the trigger point can cause a release in the trigger points. Common conditions or indications are the jumper knee, painful shoulder, tennis elbow, heel spur, insertional pain, chronic tendinopathy, medial tibial stress syndrome, calcification and hip pain. It is not limited to this only but there is a wide range of conditions that can be treated with the shock wave. Now, the contraindications for the radial and focused waves with low energy is that malignant tumor in the treatment area cannot be treated with this. So try to be cautious about this. Fetus in the treatment area, as we discussed in the, in the tummy or the belly region. High energy focused waves, lung tissues, malignant tumor, epiphyseal plate, brain or spine in the treatment area, severe coagulopathy and fetus in the treatment area. These are all the indications and again, these are not all the indications. Of course, it is not limited to this. You can pause the video and look for yourself. The therapy sequence is that it is a non-invasive treatment. So the application is simple and easy. So always initiate in three steps. The area to be treated is located using palpation in order to deliver the therapy precisely. Number one, so you can mark the area. Number two, sufficient amount of gel is applied to the area located in step one and use of gel is necessary to transfer the acoustic wave efficiently and smoothly because it acts as a medium. It helps you transfer the energy from the shock wave therapy transducer or applicator to the tissues. Here you can see the shock wave applicator is slightly pushed against the area to be treated and then start the start button and then you can start listening the sound of it and you can feel the third preparation so ensure that the patients are in a safe comfortable and position for the treatment select a position with which the operator can easily reach the affected area in an upright position and the handpiece can be applied vertically if required when treating muscles and joints prepare the area or the muscles and move or stretch in a pain-free region in advance These are the basic rules for every treatment. Pinpoint the treatment area. In the case of pain or trigger points, detect the point with the greatest sensitivity. Create a virtual grid over the treatment area. Make a few blocks with the pen or marker. And position the handpiece at the right angles to the skin surface and apply its own weight. Don't press it too hard. Apply only moderate pressure to the handpiece to move surface layers and to reach structures at depth. The contact gel is used to prevent friction on the skin. If gel is used, the silicone cap must be pulled over the applicator head in order to keep the handpiece clean. The handpiece can be held in one hand. The second hand can be used to hold the treatment area and firmly position the applicator head. Every point in the grid must be treated with the number of pulses stipulated in the protocol. If possible, start with the most sensitive point. Dosing. Patients should be gradually familiarized with the treatment. If necessary, start with the large applicator head and switch to a smaller surface area during treatment. So uh, there's, a, in, there's a formula that for the pressure, if you increase the area, the pressure will be decreased. And if you decrease the surface area, the pressure will be increased. So by using the large head, you are 
pro providing less energy when the head size is reduced then you are providing more energy both the energy level and frequency can be changed for dosing purposes and again it is really very important to start with low intensity and then gradually keep on increasing so if treatment intensity has to be reduced on tolerance grounds this should initially be done via the frequency the treatment is basically feasible via virtually all body structures and can also be applied directly to bones or bony protuberances the selected energy level and amount of pressure applied will obviously be adjusted to suit individual tolerance some people can be more sensitive as compared to the other other people's or other patients so it is not necessary that you can use the same intensity for various or different patients as a rule the more solid the structure the less energy is required no treatment must be applied to the head directly above the lungs ventrally means anteriorly over the abdomen or in the vicinity of the testicles and epiphyseal plates of children these are the methods you can see the applicator is just straight vertical that is called the right angle so static the hand piece is applied to one point and only modulated vertically with the contact pressure this is the rule of thumb when treating localized problems like pain and trigger point and even ed semi static you can you know move it a bit so hand piece remains on the point the affected area is also treated by moving the hand piece evenly working outwards from the vertical position with the amount of force applied varying according to the direction so you can just tilt it a bit to some degrees dynamic the hand piece is moved with the head in c2 and by applying contact pressure over the structure to be treated without interrupting the pulse sequence so you are just sliding it uh, to and fro or in in cross or in circular motion in clockwise or counter clockwise this method is used to treat soft tissue areas especially the muscles and remember in ed it is also muscle so you can also uh, use this method and also the static one it all depends on uh, the tolerance of the patient or the subject uses it can be used to destruct the tissues increase the biological effects and for the pain reduction these are some parameters you need to pause this video that if you want to use it for destructive purposes what are the number of sessions how often you need to treat what are the total number of shocks what is the frequency power and the head size similarly for healing and for pain relief so uh for for ed the second which is called the healing is used so this is really very important parameter that the pressure uh, can or the power can range from 60 to 90 millijoule the frequency can be between 10 to 16 the head size can be 15 to 35 mm depending upon the tolerance of the subject and 1000 shots for for each spot so even if the area is large and you are using a dynamic technique you can go for 4000 shots uh, per spot or 4000 shocks per spot so how often to treat every 7 to 10 days once every week and there can be four to six sessions that are required for the destruction of tissues you can pause this video you can also watch my other video for all these things and even if you want to read this you can read this because all of this is the summary of the previous table similarly this is also the same as we discussed in the previous table so if you want to pause the video you can pause it and have a uh, look at it what it is telling same for the tissue healing so we'll be just Uh, skipping these slides without going through because we have already discussed the summary here is the frequency and other parameters for pain as well and the frequency and number of shocks and other things the treatment time calculation you can pause this video again do the math yourself so the simple thing is you must understand whether you want to give let's say 1000 shocks or 3000 or 5000 or whatever so just divide that shocks with the frequency so let's say you are using 
uh, 3000 shocks and the frequency is for example 10 so that means you need 300 seconds so you know so you just have to do the maths and this is really very easy to perform if you still don't understand you can watch my other video i have discussed it uh, in very detail thank you very much